important operations in San Pedro is the Marine Exchange, and yet sadly, it's also one of the most unknown. Come with me as we explore the Marine Exchange. We're talking with uh, Captain Dick McKenna, the Executive Director of the Marine Exchange, and I found that when I mentioned the Marine Exchange, people say, good Lord, what is, what is that? So, Captain, first of all, welcome, and secondly, what is the Marine Exchange? Thank you, John, and you're very right. People are, are sometimes confused. Uh, we've actually had Marines show up for soap and, and, and shaving cream and things <laughs> like that from time to time. But, uh, U.S. But Marines? U.S. Marines. Uh, but uh, actually, we are a maritime exchange that provides ship information for both the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach and uh, also for Port Wanimi and San Diego. But in addition uh, to the uh, ship information, we've uh, married that to vessel traffic control where we are partners with the U.S. Coast Guard to run uh, the only public-private partnership uh, vessel traffic service in the entire United States. You say ship information, you provide that. Now, who would be someone that would want that information? Well, uh, all of the uh, people who, uh, who work the ports are very much involved in uh, that ship information. Uh, for before example, the ship arrives? Uh, before the ship arrives, and in some cases after it leaves. Uh, we have a database that goes all the way back to 1923 wow. of every uh, ship uh, that has been in here. So we're, we're a historical repository of things that people can use for research or, or uh, uh, you know, background or, you know, in some cases even telling a story. We manage this uh, for the Coast Guard, but they're the ones that uh, give us the orders. We, we work for the U.S. Coast Guard in this respect. The good thing about this is, though, that the industry has a say in this. And so it's a very complementary uh, operation for, for both sides. Uh, uh, we can facilitate a number of things uh, uh, for the Coast Guard that, uh, you know, make, make it uh, going a lot easier for them. And yet the industry feels, uh, you know, so involved that uh, everybody gets along, if you will. In another conversation <clears throat> that uh, Captain McKenna and I had, uh, Captain McKenna told me that um, the relationship that the Marine Exchange has is, quote, unique in all the United States. That's correct. Um, unique why? Unique because uh, this is the only uh, public-private partnership uh, of its kind in the United States. Uh, uh, we bring together not only the Coast Guard in running this vessel traffic service, but the participation of both ports with their pilot organizations, uh, the state of California with the Office of Spill Prevention and Response, who actually work for Fish and Wildlife, the California Fish and Wildlife Service. And so it, it's quite, quite the partnership. It's not, uh, it, 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 it just sort of works uh, on so many levels, on a security level, on a safety and environmental level. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that play into this. We have actually had uh, several instances of uh, emergency uh, medevacs that uh, we could get involved in. Uh, we have, we have a, a, a number of different uh, events that happen, and I mean, that's what we're here for, is to help, uh, it possibly as a search and rescue, although that's a secondary mission. But, um, you know, uh, we're constantly dealing with ships that, that may have a problem or so. Captain McKenna, does that uh, refer to the U.S. Navy? That's correct. I'm, I'm a retired U.S. Navy captain. And this ship behind you? And the uh, ship behind us is actually one of the prides and joys of uh, the port of Los Angeles. Uh, this is a, a, a replica of the Irving Johnson, a brigantine that, uh, that uh, works under an organization called the Los Angeles Maritime Institute, uh, or LAMI as the locals know it. And uh, its whole mission is to take uh, at-risk kids out and show them a different part of the world or a different... Uh, 
a different scene. And so they, they go out on these uh, brigantines. There's a sister ship uh, called uh, the Exe Johnson. And uh, they, uh, this is a nonprofit that uh, we're uh, very involved in uh, that, uh, you know, gives another uh, look at life to, uh, to uh, underprivileged kids. So this uh, model is a ship uh, or vessel that is actually in operation today. I mean, when I looked at it, if you're into maritime stuff, um, I sort of looked at that and thought, well, boy, that's something like from 1850, but maybe the actual well, ship is not that old. No, actually, it, it's probably less than 10 years old. I, well, I, I have to uh, think about that. They were built right here. They are the tall ships, the official tall ships yeah. of the city of Los Angeles. <laughs> And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we'd love to see uh, anybody who is interested uh, come and uh, contact myself or the Maritime Institute uh, 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 down at the port. And having said that, Captain, uh, what telephone number or website should they go to? 310-833-6055. That's the number for the offices of the Maritime Institute. Captain McKenna, first of all, thank you very much for a truly fascinating uh, conversation. But let's end this on a, on a perhaps a high note of, of maybe British-type humor. It kind of amazed me or <laughs> made me smile when you said that uh, sometimes U.S. Marines or military people come up here when they see the word Marine exchange. They're thinking of the post exchange. I mean, do they <laughs> literally come in here and... and I, I can't say we've we've had uh, anything of, at platoon strength or anything, but we've had we've had several, and my favorite is actually two women who called up and said just said how how long are you open? And we said we're open twenty four seven, and they and they, they were dependents apparently that that came up uh, looking for cosmetics or something, and so uh, so we, we we have a lot of fun with that. Captain McKenna, thank you very much. Thank you. We're talking with Captain Jennifer Williams of the United States Coast Guard down here in San Pedro. And the Coast Guard is very involved with the Marine Exchange. In fact, they told me that their relationship with the Coast Guard is one of the most special things in all the United States. So having said that, tell us about the connection between the U.S. Coast Guard and the Marine Exchange. Well, we have the only public-private uh, vessel traffic service here in the United States, located in, Lo in Los Angeles, Long Beach. Uh, when I say public-private, it's a, it's a cooperation between the government and private entity. So the government provides the property, and we provide some authorities to allow uh, the Marine Exchange to do their work more effectively. When you say authority, I mean, I picture someone, you know, saying you can do this and you can't do that. Is that, is that sort of what it is or not? Absolutely. It's, a, it's called the Captain of the Port Authority. And it allows uh, um, the captain of the port has the authority to to uh, restrict vessels' movement, to stop them, to ask them to stop, to anchor, to you stop, the coast guard stops them. The, the captain of the port authority is uh, retained by the coast guard, so our sector commander, Captain Jenkins, uh, retains that authority. And what we do with the marine exchange is we provide watchstanders to participate on their watch team 24 hours a day. Um, so that we have a representative, a Coast Guard representative at the Marine Exchange. So if they need to stop a vessel and tell them that they need to anchor or not proceed further, they have that authority with the Coast Guard on their watch team. Why would, uh, just as an example, why would you need possibly to stop a vessel? Uh, there are many reasons. It could be a marine casualty, a loss of propulsion, perhaps uh, weather, fog. Um, or, uh, or just a concern, maybe we have other issues in the port that we need to restrict. Have there been any really, in your memory, dramatic things in this relationship? I know that there was a, um, a casualty that occurred uh, several years ago um, that involved a death of a, wow. a person on a recreational boat. As it turns out, the Marine Exchange was able to use their equipment to see um, what vessel traffic was in the area at the time of that um, incident was able to track down which vessel conceivably could have been involved in the casualty. Yeah. And as it turns out, they were correct in their assumption with their um, the data that they had from the radars. And uh, we were able to track down um, who was involved in the incident and able to even pinpoint exactly where the incident occurred. So I, I think that's a success story for the Marine Exchange. Um, these boats, or what do you call these boats or ships below us? 
Uh, these are patrol. Or these are uh, small boats. And they do what? They uh, do a multiple uh, multiple missions: um, search and rescue, law enforcement. Uh, they do patrols within the port. They look like a really fun, I mean, I guess when they're out there in the ocean, they really zip along pretty fast. These are great boats to, uh, to zip around, as you would say. Mm -hmm. um, they can go fairly quickly and they can turn on a dime. And uh, I think the crews that operate these boats really enjoy operating them. Is the U.S. Coast Guard, I don't know, the sort of policeman of the ocean? And I know that uh, in the background there is Palos Verdes and there's been quite a few Gosh, I don't know, landings of un unauthorized boats on the coast there. Can you talk a little bit about all of that? I, I can. Uh, really, the Coast Guard has 11 statutory missions, but to simplify things, we're concerned about safety of life at sea, safety of property on the sea, and uh, stewardship of our environment. So um, as far as uh, being policemen of the sea, I would say, yes, that's part of our statutory requirements, the law enforcement mission whether it be drug interdiction or migrant interdiction or ensuring that people don't spill oil into our waters. That's, those are many of our concerns that we have. Were your parents uh, somehow nautical or Navy inclined? No, my uh, father was a school teacher and, <laughs> and my mom is the mom of 12 kids. So she stayed home and what? took care of us. <laughs> you look like you really enjoy what you do. And I think in life, it's very important to do something that, you know, hopefully you get paid for, but also something that you really enjoy. And obviously you do enjoy what you're doing. Absolutely. The Coast Guard's been a great career for me. And I think most people in the Coast Guard, if not all, would say the same thing. The missions that we do are very relevant to um, the port, you know, facilitating commerce and safety and security within the port. And I think mo most people get a lot of satisfaction out of that, as I do for people watching who wonder, how can I get involved in the U.S. Coast Guard? Uh, would you want to give out a website address or something? If you want to um, contact a recruiter, you can, you can look under uscg.mil, and that should uh, get you some information about Coast Guard recruiting. So next time you're driving down Gaffey and you see a building at the top of the hill, you'll now know how important this building, the Marine Exchange, is to the Port of Los Angeles.